He 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 he. This story starts with our protagonist, whose name is Xiao Tian, and who is the ace of the assassins group. However, he is currently cornered by a group of assailants who begin attacking him, causing a blast in the scene. The scene changes, and we see a beautiful woman who is trying to summon a spirit from another world to be her servant. She accidentally summons our protagonist, and Xiao Tian is confused as he was just being cornered moments ago but suddenly finds himself in an unknown place. The woman, whose name is Zurian, is disappointed because she has summoned a normal guy without any powers. On the other hand, Xiao Tian is mesmerized by Zurian's beauty. After some time of staring, our protagonist asks why he is here, and she introduces herself as the Empress of the Flame Dynasty. She informs Xiao Tian that from this day forward, he is this dynasty's empress's husband. Our protagonist was confused, so she started explaining again that she is the empress of the Flame Dynasty. However, her power isn't stable in the first place. Additionally, her subjects are suggesting that she should get married, but she doesn't want to be threatened by them. So, she summoned our protagonist to shield her from their protests. Our protagonist interrupts her and asks if it's true that he doesn't have to do anything besides being her shield. He invites her onto the bed to start right away. But she apologizes to him and tells him that she can't fulfill the responsibility of being his wife. However, she can promise him a carefree life with no worries and a bounty of luxuries. She will also think of a way to deal with the contract ring. She asks him to follow her to the imperial study. As soon as she leaves, our protagonist quickly realizes that she is a dominant woman and that the ring is the contract ring, owned by whoever is summoned by the summoning spell, and the wearer cannot commit any harmful actions towards the summoner. Our protagonist also obtained a system while traveling between dimensions. The system asks him if he would like to activate the strongest supreme system and asks him to choose between yes or no. Our protagonist decides to choose no because he was an orphan adopted by an assassin's group from a young age, and to survive, he had to keep getting stronger by killing, meaninglessly fulfilling missions. But now he can't imagine anything better than being a carefree prince. The system tries to escape our protagonist's body but fails, because our protagonist is now a super high-dimensional earth creature. After failing for the 9999th time, the system asks our protagonist if it can be his auxiliary system. Authorized in master-slave mode. The system asks our protagonist to choose yes or no again, and this time our protagonist decides to choose yes. The system asks our protagonist to grant it a name, and our protagonist names it, Wankel. Later, the system suggested our protagonist to learn how to control his breath as soon as possible to avoid unnecessary consequences. If he cannot control it, he may inadvertently erase Wankel's existence. So, our protagonist decides to suppress it, and after doing so, he feels that he has grown stronger. He asks Wankel if he is now weak or strong. The system explains that our protagonist comes from a super high dimensional plane with strict heavenly rules. He has been under the suppression of 490k rules, but now that he has come to this low dimensional plane with fewer rules, his body eagerly absorbs the power between heaven and earth to strengthen itself. The normal pressure on earth is 490k rules, so our protagonist asks about the pressure in this world, and it turns out to be 3k. Upon hearing this, our protagonist is so surprised that he spills tea from his mouth, accidentally creating a hole in the roof of his room. He asks Wankal to assess his current state. Despite the system's limited ability to detect him, it reveals that our protagonist is a super high-dimensional creature. Determined to test his strength, our protagonist goes to the martial arts arena, where he effortlessly breaks a sword just by touching it. He wonders if the Empress is the one who has been cutting corners too much. Later, Wankal tells our protagonist that there are nine grades of spiritual power and weapons, each further divided into lower, middle, upper, and extreme grades. The sword our protagonist just broke is a sixth-order ultimate spiritual weapon. Undeterred, our protagonist decides to try another sword, but he ends up cracking it just by gripping it in his hand. Frustrated, he puts the sword back in its place and decides not to touch it again. The next morning, 
our protagonist wakes up to find Zarian sleeping beside him. Shocked, he asks her what happened the night before and if he is dirty now. Zarian, still sleepy, quickly composes herself and explains that she needed to sleep with him. I mean beside him to avoid rumors and gossip. They say that on the wedding night, couples who sleep in separate beds often face criticism. She assures him that she will only come from time to time in the future and apologizes for summoning him here for her own benefit. Later that night, we see Zarian talking with her general, Zhong Li Huang, about the situation in the northern area. General Zhong informs Zarian about the frequent movements of barbarians and expresses concerns that someone may be manipulating them behind the scenes. Intelligence reports indicate that the barbarian's holy master has left the royal court. Enraged, Zarian decides to personally deal with this matter after three days. Three days later, they are ready to leave and Zarian confirms with General Zhong if all the arrangements are in place. The general then informs her that her daughter, Linger, has been secretly following our protagonist. The general asks Zarian why she is so concerned about our protagonist, who is perceived as a useless man. Zarian explains that after marrying our protagonist, the luck of the great Yen dynasty has become more stable, and even her own strength has improved. They set off for the northern area unaware that they are being watched from afar by someone. Meanwhile, Zhao Linger, also known as Blondie, I gave her the name Blondie, and right now is upset that her mother left her to secretly protect a trash prince, who ran to the mountains for his appetite instead of accompanying Zarian to fight for the country. As she is thinking about this, our protagonist suddenly gets kidnapped by someone. After searching for our protagonist, Zhao Ling arrives at the location where he was kidnapped. However, she didn't realize that it's not actually our protagonist, but rather a clone of him, and she falls into a trap, getting trapped in a spirit chain cage, which is a six-order blocking formation. Wait, 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 you mean she is sixteen? How can she be sixteen? Look at her. Man, I need an explanation. In the next scene, they take our protagonist and Ling to a cave where one of the men gives our protagonist some water and asks him to use it in the Empress's martial arts arena. Our protagonist agrees, but Linger starts slandering him. Our protagonist ignores her and asks the man if he can leave with Linger if he explained the situation. He also mentions that he wants to settle the score with Blondie, who seems to be causing trouble. However, our protagonist isn't agreed with him. He tells if she doesn't come with him, then he will die anyway so he might as well die here. Hearing that a man attacked our protagonist from behind and was surprised to see him so relaxed. And the man grabs our protagonist's hair, something our protagonist hates the most. Enraged, our protagonist kills the man, creating a big hole in the cave. He then proceeds to kill all the other men, leaving only the leader alive. Our protagonist tells him that he was cooperating with him, and just wanted to leave his peaceful life. The man pleads for his life, but our protagonist kills him anyway. Afterward, our protagonist approaches the underage girl, and she assumes that he intends to harm her as well, so she begs for her life. However, he releases her, instructing her to stay put as he goes to dispose of the corpse. He leaves, and some time later, she sees something jumping around. Unfortunately, it's not the prince she was hoping for, it's just a mountain, somehow bouncing around. She realizes that a mountain shouldn't be able to jump. And then she realizes it's our protagonist, who is holding the mountain in his hand. Our protagonist places the mountain beside her and tells her not to mention what she just witnessed. He says that when the guards come, he will claim that she saved him. She promises to keep quiet, and while they are talking... Female guards arrive and inquire about the kidnappers who had taken our protagonist. The blondie informs them that she has already beheaded all the thieves, so there is nothing to worry about. Our protagonist expresses a desire to return to eating barbecue, but his request is denied by one of the guards, Lu Yen, who tells him that the area is no longer safe. However, our protagonist responds that it doesn't matter anymore because the little girl has already killed all the thieves. All female guards expecting their major general to beat our protagonist to death because he called her a little girl. But the little girl quietly follows our protagonist without saying a word, 
and all female guards were shocked by their major general's good temper. Upon returning to their location, the little girl happily serves our protagonist, leaving the female guards astonished and thinking that their major general has been broken. Our protagonist asks the little girl if she knows the kidnappers because she seemed familiar with them. She explains that she knows the leader, Liang Shou, who used to be the bandit leader of Yanlong Zai. It was a test set by her mother before she came of age. The one who was supposed to be publicly displayed a year ago unexpectedly became a killer in the Blood Cloud Tower. Later on, our protagonist overhears the female guards talking and learns that more people are expected to arrive within seven days. Lu Yen advises our protagonist to stay in the palace for a while, as it is a strong and safe place. Our protagonist quickly agrees, as he wants to avoid conflict and simply live as a carefree prince. While the guards think that our protagonist is afraid of death, he starts heading to the palace. Some female guards start whispering behind their backs, but our protagonist ignores them. He then tells the little girl that he overheard the guards talking about how the Blood Cloud Tower will bring disaster to the common people and the Empress will be in trouble. He asks the little girl for more details, and she starts explaining that when their missions fail, the blood-building killers start slaughtering people and extorting protection fees from the Yen Dynasty government. She further explains that there are corrupt officials in the court who favor certain wealthy families. These officials go to the Blood Cloud Tower to offer rewards in exchange for protection. Since the court protects these corrupt officials, the blood-building killers have no choice but to resort to massacring people in order to force the court to submit to their demands. Chaoteng, possibly another party or entity, can afford to pay the protection fee to the Blood Cloud Tower, resulting in the cancellation of the mission. However, the money paid by the local wealthy family to the corrupt officials will not be refunded, resulting in the wealthy family being taken advantage of from both ends. And here our protagonist is worried that if his wife found out about his strength, she would ask him to take care of things. After some time of thinking, our protagonist becomes afraid of divorce, so he decides to kill everyone in the Blood Cloud building. He is too afraid of divorce, but his wife is certainly beautiful. What if she says something like this? You're such a good boy. Anyways, they enter the forest and the little girl tells our protagonist that she doesn't know where the Blood Cloud building is. But our protagonist is confident he can find it and assess if the place is safe or not. After confirming that the place is safe, he picks up the little girl and jumps like the Hulk. Guys, now enjoy the scene. Warns our protagonist to slow down his flight speed because the little girl's body has already reached a critical point. Our protagonist arrives at the location and he realizes the place is covered by an invisible shield. So our protagonist destroys the shield with a powerful punch and finds out that it was a flying branch building. No wonder the Empress couldn't locate the building, as it turned out to be in the sky. They land in front of the building, and the little girl asks if they are going to sneak in or do something else, but our protagonist quickly enters the building. Inside, a girl asks our protagonist how he got there and who he is but our protagonist is not interested in answering her, and he starts killing everyone inside the building. The little girl was very surprised because our protagonist is. As our protagonist kills everyone more people arrive at the building. The last time we saw our protagonist, there was an increasing number of people arriving to kill him. However, with just one powerful punch, he effortlessly defeated them all, leaving a trail of destruction and holes everywhere. It seems like our protagonist has a penchant for creating holes. Once he had vanquished all his foes, he took our little girl companion outside. As they emerged into the open, he smashed through a wall of a nearby room, revealing a hidden treasure inside. Without hesitation, our protagonist decided to take some of the valuable loot as compensation for the trouble he had been through. Among the treasures, our protagonist stumbled upon a precious seventh-level defense talisman. Realizing the urgency of their situation and the distance they needed to cover to reach the headquarters of the Blood Cloud Tower, our protagonist made a quick decision. He decided to use the talisman on the little girl to enhance her defenses, 
as he was worried that his flying speed might be too much for her delicate body to handle. With the talisman in place, he carefully picked up the little girl and carried her on his shoulder as they took to the skies, heading towards the Blood Cloud Tower. However, even with the Seventh Order Defense Talisman, our protagonist's incredible speed proved to be too much for it to handle. As they arrived at the headquarters of Blood Cloud Buildings, they were immediately surrounded by guards. A man named Yun Zunlai, who was the owner of the Blood Cloud Building and the renowned King of Assassins in the Southern Desolate Territory, also appeared from the top of the building. It seemed that our protagonist's reputation and prowess had caught the attention of the formidable Yun Zunlai and his organization. Our protagonist couldn't contain his curiosity and asked Yun Zunlai why the Blood Cloud Tower was so interested in the Great Flame Dynasty. To his surprise, Yun Zunlai revealed that while he had been initially interested in the Flame Dynasty, he was now more intrigued by our protagonist, who had come knocking at their door during a relatively weak period and even managed to break through their defense formation. Yun Zunlai then ordered his men to take down our protagonist, but one man among them stepped forward and claimed that he could handle our protagonist alone. The little girl accompanying our protagonist informed him that the man was likely the deputy owner of the Blood Cloud building. The man approached our protagonist and started mocking him for his small and pretty face, likening him to a girl. However, our protagonist, unfazed, asked the man to hit him directly in the head. This angered the man, who thought our protagonist was making fun of him and he attempted to punch our protagonist with all his might. However, our protagonist easily blocked the punch with just one finger. The man tries to punch our protagonist again with all of his power but beat himself by using too much power. The man then confessed that the intelligence department had gathered incorrect information about our protagonist, and he was shocked by our protagonist's strength. Realizing that time was running out for dinner, our protagonist decided to eliminate all of Yun Zunlai's men. He launched a ferocious attack against them, but they quickly realized they were no match for him and attempted to escape in order to relay the information about our protagonist's true strength. However, our protagonist swiftly caught up to them and defeated them all. The man who had previously beaten himself in his attempt to strike our protagonist was left in shock and eventually passed out after witnessing the incredible speed and prowess of our protagonist. Ji Yuyan, the girl who had come out from the headquarters earlier, begged our protagonist to spare her life and offered to serve him by his side. She was known to be a heart-eater, skilled in seducing men with her beauty and gentleness until they were intoxicated by her charms. However, our protagonist, who was loyal to his wife, was not swayed by her seduction. He sternly warned her not to try to seduce him, as it could lead to misunderstandings with his wife, the Empress and potentially result in a divorce. Recognizing her sinister intentions, our protagonist decided to kill Ji Yu Yen. Despite his desire to act decisively, our protagonist refrained from being too harsh, as he was concerned about being misunderstood. He asked the little girl to be a witness to his actions, so that she could vouch for his intentions of guarding the Empress like precious jade, in case his actions were ever exposed. The scene then shifts to Yun Zun Lai who is shown hiding under his bed in fear of our protagonist. He believes that the Yen dynasty holds a big secret, which is why our protagonist is so powerful. He recalls the written records he found in the ruins, which revealed the ancient connection between the Great Yen Empire and the Great Yen dynasty. Various forces are eyeing the Yen dynasty for the secrets it holds, and Yun Zunlai is aware of this fact. After some time, Yun Zunlai hears noises and assumes that our protagonist has left. So he cautiously comes out from under the bed. However, he is shocked to find out that our protagonist had been waiting for him all along, causing him to freak out in fear. Our protagonist tries to approach him, but he escaped by blowing up the place. He thought he escaped however, our protagonist emerges out of nowhere and grabs him by his neck, he took him to the little girl. The little girl is shocked to discover that the owner of the Blood Cloud building and the King of the Assassin in the Southern Desolate Territory was hiding from our protagonist under the bed. And how our protagonist found him is very simple, he heard the sound of his blood flowing. Our protagonist interrogates Yun Zunlai about his motives for eyeing the Yen Dynasty, 
but despite Yun Zunlai's offer to exchange information for sparing his life. But now, our protagonist is not interested in the information so. He ultimately kills him. Our protagonist destroyed all blood cloud building and returns carrying his little girl. They catch up to the female guards and all head to the home. On the back, Lu Yan was worried and expresses her concern over the little girl's reckless behavior with the prince, as the people from the Blood Cloud Tower have a history of acting recklessly. Lu Yan is worried as her fiancé had died while fighting the people from the Blood Cloud building some time ago, and she remembers him with tears in her eyes. On the other side, one of the guards asks our protagonist how he remains so calm. Our protagonist, who can even hear the sound of blood flowing was hearing Yun Zunlai and the little girl's conversation. Responds that he feels he has done something meaningful just now, and rest in peace. The next day, the little girl gets dressed up to meet our protagonist, but her father, Zhong Yangming, stops her. After finding out that she is going to the palace, he tells her that she shouldn't go to the palace because it's guarded and he has heard rumors that the prince is greedy for pleasure. Despite her father's warnings, the little girl ignores him and heads to the palace anyway. Zhong Yangming was confused because yesterday, she was complaining that her mother hired her for a bad job. At the palace, our protagonist is enjoying his life, but Lu Yen, who is angry with him, because the empress personally went to the front lines to fight, but he is here for pleasure. Just then, the little girl arrives, surprising Lu Yen with the other guards. When our protagonist asks why she is there, the little girl replies that she is there to protect him and fulfill her duties. However, our protagonist doesn't want her protection and asks her to stay put and not join in the fun. Lu Yen again thought that her major general will beat our protagonist to death, but quite opposite happened, she obeyed his order. Lu Yen was confused that first the empress fall for him and decided to marry him, and now the proud daughter of heaven, her major general is also fascinated by this charming prince. Sometime later, Lu Yen receives news about the Blood Cloud Tower and shares it with the little girl, expecting her to be surprised. However, the little girl shows no reaction, leaving Lu Yen and others puzzled about her lack of surprise. The little girl quickly realized that she needed to act surprised in order to hide the truth that our protagonist was the one responsible for the destruction of the Blood Cloud Tower's sub-building. So, she began to put on a fake act, but our protagonist, who was monitoring the situation, thought it was too fake. Lu Yen was worried about the possible revenge from the headquarters of the Blood Cloud Tower, especially because the Empress was personally marching and the King of Assassins from the Southern Wasteland might have attacked the Yen Dynasty. The little girl laughed after remembering that Yun Zunlai who was the owner of the Blood Cloud building and the renowned king of assassins in the southern desolate territory was hiding under the bed, from the fear of our protagonist. Lu Yen was again confused that why she is laughing instead of worrying and wishing to go to northern Xinjiang to report the situation to General Zhong Li Suang. Lu Yen asked her why she was laughing, and the little girl was about to tell the truth when our protagonist suddenly arrived and struck her from behind. He then proceeded to lecture her on her behavior. Later, our protagonist assured Lu Yen that she didn't have to worry about the little girl, as he would take care of teaching her. He told Lu Yen that she could go if she had something else to do. Our protagonist decided to take the little girl with him, much to the surprise of the guards and Lu Yen, who thought that her major general had fallen in love with our protagonist. Lu Yen decided to write a letter to General Zhong and inform her father about the situation. The scene changes that we see the little girl tells our protagonist that she'll never do this again, but our protagonist couldn't believe her so. She bows her head and raises her no to apologize and asks him to make her his apprentice because she wants to be strong as him. However, our protagonist revealed that he was actually a reincarnated person, but she didn't believe him. Despite that, our protagonist left without further explanation. Half a month later, on Qinyan Mountain, while our protagonist was enjoying some delicious wild boar, Lu Yen received the news that the entire Blood Cloud building had been completely destroyed by a mysterious strong man. She realized that she had been worrying for the past half month about nothing, as the person who destroyed the Blood Cloud building had taken revenge for her fiancé. In the next scene, 
Lu Yan was seen thanking the person who had destroyed the blood cloud building, not realizing that it was our protagonist who was listening to her from behind a tree. He welcomed her with a smile. As the story continues, a new plot unfolds on the other side where a master and his disciple arrive at the site where the blood cloud building was destroyed. They exchange some trash talk and then decide to head towards the Yen Dynasty, seeing it as a perfect opportunity since Zeruyan is occupied in the northern battlefield. Their first destination is Qingyun Mountain, where our protagonist is currently located. Meanwhile, at the northern battlefield, the Empress and her general are preparing for battle when a guard arrives and hands over the two letters that Lu Yan had sent. After reading the letter, the general learns about the destruction of the blood cloud building by a strong man. But it's the second letter that infuriates her. The Empress decides to read it, and in the letter, it is written that the Major General has become infatuated with Xiao Tian's masculinity and dresses up carefully every day to meet him. Our protagonist's wife finds it hard to believe as she hadn't noticed his charms before. However, she acknowledges that he is quite handsome, but she believes that no matter how handsome he is, he can't do that. Dang, this chibi looks cute. Suddenly the barbarians attacked on them. And this is for today. Hello guys, a few days ago someone super thanked $2 to me, you know from that button near downloads, so I wanted to say that don't waste your money on me. I earn enough from YouTube. Instead, if you want to donate, donate the money to some poor person who's in need of food. And this is for today. Have a nice day hee hee hee. The last time we witnessed a barbarian attack on the Empress, she decided to take matters into her own hands and confront the manipulator behind the barbarians, leaving the task of handling the barbarian army to her trusted general. During the ensuing battle, the cunning old man managed to ensnare the Empress, attempting to enrage her, but she displayed remarkable composure by resorting to meditation to regain her calm. Meanwhile, our protagonist, endowed with an incredibly strong physique that requires him to eat constantly to sustain his energy, is indulging in a leisurely meal, oblivious to the chaos that unfolds around him. It was only when he noticed the absence of Lu Yan that our protagonist became alarmed, prompting him to inquire about her whereabouts from a little girl who informed him that Lu Yan had left for Qingyun town to procure some wine for her prince. Fearing for her safety, our protagonist resolved to embark on a perilous journey to Qingyun town, accompanied by the little girl. Before leaving, he made sure to inform the guards to listen and wait for Lu Yan, in case they missed each other. Upon reaching Qingyun town, Lu Yan was immediately set upon by Xian Yuanbai, the ruthless master, and his disciple Gu Hong Mao, whom we had encountered previously. Despite putting up a valiant fight, Lu Yan was vastly outmatched by her assailants, and was on the verge of being slain by Gu Hong Mao. But just in the nick of time, our protagonist arrived and intervened, delivering a crushing blow to Gu Hong Mao with a piece of rock. Lu Yan was astonished to see him by her side and bewildered by Gu Hong Mao's reluctance to kill her. However, before she could gather her wits, our protagonist ordered the little girl to eliminate Gu Hong Mao, bringing an end to the fierce confrontation. As the little girl engaged in a fierce battle with Gu Hong Mao, our protagonist sprang into action and quickly handed Lu Yan some healing pills that he had acquired from the notorious Blood Cloud Killer organization. Upon receiving the pills, Lu Yan warned our protagonist about the grave danger posed by the formidable old man, urging him to flee for his life. Despite being immensely powerful, the old man appeared to be evenly matched with the little girly and Lu Yan in our protagonist's eyes. However, he couldn't help but worry about the little girl, who was only at the third level and thus seemed ill-equipped to face off against such a formidable foe, as he pondered his next move. Lu Yan's watchful gaze made him hesitant to reveal his true powers, as he feared that she might report him to the Empress. Suddenly, the little girl emerged victorious over Gu Hong Mao, but her triumph was short-lived as the old man swiftly launched a deadly attack using poisonous snakes. To everyone's surprise, the little girly managed to dodge the attack with ease. Seizing the moment, the old man taunted our protagonist, mocking him for his perceived uselessness and attributing his victory solely to his good looks. Our protagonist starts pretending, feigning fear and trepidation, revealing that he had heard of the old man's fearsome reputation and was terrified of him. 
he offered to trade the secret of the Empress in exchange for his life. But on the condition that both girls be allowed to go free. Unfortunately, Lu Yen refused to go along with his plan, stating that her duty was to protect the prince, not to run away from danger. Undeterred, our protagonist urged Lu Yen to stick to her script, but the old man had already read her mind and warned that they had no choice but to reveal the secret, lest they face certain death. Despite her apprehension, the little girl remained steadfast in her belief that it was the old man's life that was in danger, not theirs. With a wicked grin, our protagonist finally shed his facade of helplessness and unleashed his true strength. The old man, taken aback by our protagonist's unexpected display of power, stumbled and fell to the ground in shock. Our protagonist approached him, his eyes blazing with fury, and began to mercilessly slap him. The little girl, observing this spectacle from a distance, marveled at our protagonist's incredible strength and vowed never to cross him. As the dust settled, the little girl turned to Lu Yan and confided in her that her prince was indeed a force to be reckoned with. She cautioned Lu Yan not to breathe a word of this encounter to the Empress, as it could have serious repercussions. She also revealed that the mysterious strong man who had single-handedly destroyed the infamous Blood Cloud Tower was none other than their prince. Suddenly, the old man revealed his true colors and created a deadly poisonous swamp in an attempt to trap our protagonist. He warned that struggling would only make the poison spread faster, and even someone at the tenth level Holy Realm would be unable to resist its deadly effects. Gleeful at the prospect of our protagonist's demise, the old man and his disciples watched in horror as he sank deeper and deeper into the poisonous swamp. But to their astonishment, even the poisonous swamp was no match for our protagonist's otherworldly powers. Our protagonist wanted to confirm if the poisonous swamp is really that powerful, and with a cunning smile, he grabbed Gu Hong Mao and flung him into the swamp, causing him to be swallowed up by the murky depths. Our protagonist then took some of the poison and applied it to his face, asking the little girl if his skin looked whiter or more tender as a result. With the old man's defeat seemingly imminent, our protagonist approached him, intent on delivering the final blow. But before he could land the killing blow, the old man chose to take his own life instead. The little girl advised our protagonist to dispose of the corpse and destroy the poisonous swamp, and he dutifully obliged. Using his immense strength, he destroyed not only the swamp, but also the two mountains that had been accidentally broken during the battle. As he looked out over the smoking ruins of the battlefield, our protagonist couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. Our protagonist departed, asking Lu Yen to take care of Qing Yen Town and bring some wine. Shortly after he left, the defense forces of Qing Yen Town arrived and were shocked to see that the mountain was gone. However, Lu Yen calmed them down and informed them that all the problems had been resolved. I in the following scene, we see all three of them on their way to the palace. Our protagonist decided to drop the little girl off at her house, but she refused because she wanted to attend the dinner at the palace. Eventually, she agreed to stay and our protagonist patted her on the head in a playful manner. Suddenly, the father of Major General arrived and accused our protagonist of not being worthy of the Empress and how could he do such a thing while being the Empress's husband. Lu Yen, however, defended our protagonist and told Mr. Zhong that both of them are innocent. She asked how he could speak dirty words for the prince and got angry at him for such an accusation. Mr. Zhong then assumed that she had also fallen for our protagonist's masculinity. They pretended to be angry at him and left, but after some time they came back and the scene changed. In the next scene, we see all of them enjoying dinner together. Later on, Mr. Zhong apologized to our protagonist and asked if he had anything to say. Our protagonist wanted to ask him for a favor he wanted to eat the food that he made every day because his skills were too good. Mr. Zhong was initially hesitant to fulfill our protagonist's request because he was a dignified minister of the household department and couldn't be a cook for just one person. However, he eventually agreed when he found out that our protagonist would personally donate one million spiritual stones to the Ministry of the Household. Mr. Zhong asked our protagonist if the spiritual stones were okay since they didn't come from the palace. 
Our protagonist explained that he had received the spiritual stones from someone who he had accidentally offended. Despite this, Mr. Zhong accepted the spiritual stones and agreed to make food for our protagonist. In addition to agreeing to make food for our protagonist, Mr. Zhong was also told not to tell the Empress that our protagonist was the one who gave the spiritual stones. Later, our protagonist gave Mr. Zhong some advice, and three days after their meeting, the Empress was able to break free from a trap while on the northern battlefield. She had been promoted to the ninth rank and entered the Holy Realm, which enabled her to attack and kill all of the barbarians, but the old man was able to escape her attack. The Empress decided to return after finding out that Xiang Yuanbai was heading toward Qinyan town. She was worried because the old man was an eighth level detachment and was from one of the sixth evil spirits. She knew that he was too powerful but didn't know that he had committed suicide after seeing our protagonist's powers. Sometime later, as they were reaching their destination, the general was shocked after seeing mountains disappear. The Empress quickly realized that someone had probably smashed the mountain with one blow and turned it into dust and mist. The Empress then became interested in Qingyun town and decided to find Lu Yen because she had received information that Lu Yen was involved in the matter of the old man, and she believed that she could get some valuable information from her. On her way to find Lu Yen, the Empress bumped into our protagonist, Lu Yen, and the little girl who were enjoying their date. As our protagonist and his group were enjoying their date, he suddenly realized that a powerful presence was approaching him. To his surprise, he discovered that it was his wife, General Zhong, who was angry at the little girl for her actions, confronted her and accused her of having too much nerve. The little girl was confused and scared, not understanding why her mother was angry with her. Lu Yen intervened and explained that she had misunderstood the relationship between our protagonist and the little girl and wrote a letter to General earlier. General Zhong approached the little girl, causing her to hide behind our protagonist for safety. However, the general was also angry at our protagonist, so the little girl stopped her from attacking him, fearing that her mother is fucked if our protagonist fought back. Soon, a crowd gathered curious about the situation. Our protagonist reassured them that they were just acquaintances and that there was no need to be nervous. Sometime later, our protagonist started drooling over his wife's beauty and sexy figure, which caught the empress's attention. She asked him how he became so close to the people of Qinyan town, but he did not reply, leaving her confused. In the next scene, they were all heading back together, and on the way, our protagonist explained how he had gotten close to the people of Qinyan town. He also apologized to his wife for being a useless prince and using her name in this matter. But our wifey replies that he's not a useless prince and asks him to tell her if somebody calls him useless again, she will kill him with her sword. And our protagonist became happy from her protectiveness. They all had decided to go to the general's house for dinner. Before they arrived, the protagonist noticed that his wife's strength had upgraded. He asked Wang Kai about the current state of his wife and was amazed to find out that she had only gone out to resolve the war in the northern area but had entered the realm of the ninth level. Upon reaching the general's house, they were greeted by the delicious smell of food and the general's happiness at her husband starting to cook. However, upon entering, they found out that he was cooking for the prince. Mr. Zhong was surprised to see everyone there and greeted the empress before going inside to bring more bowls and chopsticks for the others. During dinner, Mr. Zhang praised the protagonist's talent in front of the Empress, who asked him why he referred to himself as a useless person if he had so many talents. On the other side of the table, the protagonist didn't know how to answer the question and was afraid that if the Empress found out, she would make him work every day for her. The Empress confirmed to the protagonist that she had promised him a life of prosperity, wealth, and power, without having to worry about food and clothing. She assured him that he could be an idle relative king. Later, they asked Lai Yen about Xiang Yuan Bai, and she informed them that someone had destroyed him and the mountains with a single punch. Moreover, the perpetrator had also destroyed the headquarters of the Blood Cloud building, killing all of its members, and had only left behind the name Yen. Moments later, Mr. Zhong asked the Empress if she planned to go to court in the future with the protagonist. 
She replied that she would go, and now she needed to protect our protagonist a little bit for the court. She needs to go to court because according to the rules of the great Yan dynasty, when an empress gets married, she is required to meet the ministers at court with the prince, in other words, to see the in-law's house. The last time we saw our protagonist, oops, wrong image, my bad, my bad, he he he. The last time we saw our protagonist, he needed to meet the ministers at court, in other words, his in-laws. He was confused about whether there would be trouble or not, so his wife started to explain. She began by telling him about the prime minister of the great Yen dynasty, named Lu Weoshin. The prime minister of the great Yen dynasty, Lu Weoshin was in the position before his father wasn't lost. However, in the first year of his father's disappearance, his eldest brother succeeded to the throne and the barbarian's kingdom went south. He drove himself to conquer and died in battle in the north. After the second brother succeeded to the throne, wars broke out in the Black Soul Palace in southern Xinjiang, which then spread to Great Yen. He went south to quell the chaos, expanded the territory but died of poisoning in the end. With the help of Lu Ocean, Zeruyan ascended to the throne and proclaimed herself empress at the young age of 16. Lu Ocean had promised to return to the government at the age of 18, but he formed a political party, and for a time, power was in the hands of the ruling and opposition parties. If it had not been for her secret launch and her natural talents, the situation could have become even more chaotic. But after Zarian's 18th birthday, by the way, Lu Ocean is also Zarian's father, so he started persuading her to have a baby kiss between her and her dog and also asked her to consider children. Look guys, the Manawa's translation is not good, so sorry if you don't understand something. I bet they use City Google Translate for translation. She had been procrastinating until she accidentally learned the summoning spell to Desmond, which brought our protagonist to the Yen dynasty, and eventually became her husband. According to her, her father would definitely make things difficult for our protagonist. Upon hearing this, our protagonist got lost in thought. His wife thought he was afraid and told him that he didn't have to go if he didn't want to. However, our protagonist replied that he would go with the empress and stated that nobody could kill him if the empress herself was protecting him. After hearing our protagonist's sweet words, his wife became embarrassed and left, saying that she remembered some important work. In the next scene, we see our protagonist, the little girl, and Lu Yen on their way to the palace. However, our protagonist realizes that someone is following him on the way. He takes off his contract ring to change positions because sometimes it gets crooked, making him feel uncomfortable. The little girl and Lu Yen are surprised and ask him how he did it. Our protagonist repeats the process to show them how he did it. As they continue on their way to the palace, the little girl asks our protagonist if he plans to beat Lu Ocean to death. Our protagonist refuses and playfully hits the little girl on the head for her cheeky question. Upon arriving at the palace, our protagonist asks the little girl and Lu Yen to follow the old rules and practice according to the method he taught them before they head back home. What the hell what kind of practice is that? I know this position, this is doggy style. After practicing for an hour they left, and our protagonist start his practice and realized that Zeroin arrived. She arrived but what the hell is this? What are they planning to do like 1 versus 19? Later Zeroin asks our protagonist not to stare too much and to follow her to the palace and go to bed. What does that mean? Inside Zeroin notices a lot of sweat on the floor and thought that our protagonist was working out behind the scenes and praise him a little, yes a little. This time our protagonist again gets embarrassed because his wife is beautiful. Come on dude I know your wife is beautiful where are you making me jealous? In the bedroom, Zeroin asks our protagonist to take a rest and invites him onto the bed. Our protagonist was nervous so his wife tells him that he's nervous like as if she is going to eat him. However, our protagonist tells her that he is just a little nervous because it's his second time to slept in the same bed with girl. Jealous and angry, Zeroin asked our protagonist who was the first, however, our protagonist responded by reminding her that she was also the first, as she had sneaked into his bed a few days ago. Curious about his intentions for going to the court to meet the officials, 
Zero An asked our protagonist if he had changed his mind and if he didn't want to go, she assured him that she could handle everything on her own. In response, our protagonist revealed that before he was summoned to this place, he had been all alone and very lonely. But now, he had become the husband of the Empress. He acknowledged that he was not worthy of being her husband, but in a sense, he now had a family. And that family was Zeroian. Although he couldn't solve her problems, he wanted to be by her side to face every challenge. And the night ends, for your kind information nothing happened between them. The next day, our protagonist accompanied the Empress to the court. Upon arrival, a phoenix chair was prepared for him. However, as he was not a woman, he felt embarrassed to sit on it. Upon noticing this, the Empress became very angry and ordered the officials to prepare a new chair for our protagonist immediately. Later they came up with a new chair and the court started. After some trash talk, Louis Ocean wasted no time in attacking our protagonist's worthiness to be the Empress's husband. Both parties grew angry, but our protagonist found the situation amusing. The little girl attempted to speak up, but Lu Yen silenced her, telling her to be quiet. The Empress was outraged by Lu Ocean's accusations and made it clear that anyone who spoke ill of her husband would be met with swift and deadly consequences. The display of her power surprised everyone in the court, and even Lu Ocean was taken aback. However, Lu Ocean then congratulated the Empress on her improved cultivation, and everyone followed suit in congratulating her. Later, Lu Ocean continued his attack by accusing our protagonist of engaging in nefarious activities for personal gain and using the Empress's title to behave improperly. He also claimed that our protagonist had a foul odor and was not fit to be the Emperor's husband. Furthermore, he brought up the fact that the daughter of General Zhong was constantly seen with our protagonist and questioned his understanding of propriety and gender roles. He doesn't understand the difference between men and women and he doesn't understand superiority and inferiority. Lu Ocean continued his attack, accusing our protagonist of blackmailing the minister of the Ministry of Household Affairs into becoming his personal cook, which drew laughter from the onlookers. However, before he could continue with his accusations, Mr. Zhong suddenly appeared and came to our protagonist's defense. Even the little girl spoke up in support of our protagonist stating that she had improved her behavior after following his guidance. Lu Ocean demanded evidence of Mr. Zhong's claims, but since it was only verbal communication, there was no physical evidence to support it. Our protagonist interrupted the conversation and asked Lu Ocean if he had any evidence to prove his accusations. Lu Ocean had no evidence to present, and the two parties were at a stalemate. Finally, Lu Ocean came up with an ancient inheritance book, suggesting that our protagonist take a look inside it. However, the Empress quickly intervened, refusing to allow our protagonist to look at the book because it was written in a different language and was an important historical artifact. If our protagonist doesn't understand it, he'll die suddenly. Seventeen people have already died while trying to decipher this ancient book. Our protagonist agreed but later he tells Louis Ocean that the test he is proposing is unreasonable. Because if our protagonist doesn't understand the book, he has to pay for his life. But if our protagonist understands Louis Ocean will not lose anything so, this is too unreasonable. The Empress's brother interrupts our protagonist but he slaps him and complains to Louis Ocean that he didn't raise his son well, interrupting adults' conversations. The Empress's brother quickly apologized to the Empress however, she already warned them so, he'll be fine for half a year. After this Louis Ocean suggested to our protagonist that if he's really good, Louis Ocean will give the half-key jade pendant of the secret library left by the late emperor in the palace. And in addition, he'll give three million spiritual stones as a congratulatory gift to wish them a happy wedding. But our protagonist asked for five million spirit stones because three million wasn't enough, and Louis Ocean promised six million spirit stones. Our protagonist starts reading the book. His wife was scared because she doesn't want to lose our protagonist and lost all of her hope. However, some time later, our protagonist closes the book halfway, and the Empress freaked out because someone once opened the book he must finish it if he doesn't know how to read he will die at the last page and he also has to die if he gives up and closes the book halfway too. 
Liu Weoshin thought that our protagonist is going to die but our protagonist was totally fine and he also freaked out. Our protagonist just closed the book because he was too tired to stand. He decided to sit and read slowly. Everyone was staring at our protagonist so he tells them to continue the court meeting. The empress questions our protagonist if he is feeling any discomfort but he replies that he is totally fine. After some time of reading our protagonist started getting headaches and on the other side, his wife is very proud of him because according to her, even if our protagonist is an ordinary person, is different and extraordinary but she doesn't know that our protagonist is something else. Our protagonist was getting headaches so he decided to ask Wang Kai about the book and Wang Kai tell our protectionist that the book is an ancient book inherited by the ancient gods protecting the power of a prohibition and can obliterate the existence of strength of the Tenth Order Saint Realm but it's just our protagonist's body too strong so this force is nothing for him. Our protagonist was very happy because this world seems a bit interesting and there are things that are not human-like. He asked Wang Kai to translate it for him. But he replies that it takes 3,000 points to translate an ancient book inherited from the ancient gods and the task point can be obtained by completing the task issued by the system. Instead of completing the tasks our protagonist started threatening the system and Wang Kai got scared so it used a cheat code that his master can complete the task just by resting on the chair in one second and get 100 million points. So every task got automatically completed and our protagonist obtained 100 million tasks the system started translating book. Louis Ocean asks our protagonist if understood the book or is he going to make any ridiculous excuses like a fake book but about protagonist didn't plan to play any tricks. The book was translating and suddenly the book changed into a golden book. Everyone was surprised. Empress stands up and asks if this type of talent is enough for our protagonist to be worthy of her husband. Lu Weoshin he started making excuses that the golden book of inheritance appeared but our protagonist has not yet accepted the inheritance. But moments later, our protagonist even did that. Everyone was happy and our protagonist throw the book onto the ground and asks Louis Ocean to fulfill his promise and not to make any ridiculous excuses the book was a fake book. Louis Ocean tells that he'll fulfill his promise and the congratulations gift from minister will be sent to the palace in the afternoon. Later, the empress head back and left. Outside our protagonist tells the little girl that he has won a big victory today so he will he will be going to her house for tonight dinner. Our protagonist wasn't sure if Lu Ocean he's going to it's going to send 6 million sprit stones or not. But Lu Yen confirms that Lu Ocean said it, so he will do it. On the way the little girl asked about the book so our protagonist tells the it was some kind of inheritance book of the ancient gods and it prohibits people who can obliterate the strength of the tenth order saint realm and below. Both girls ask about the ancient code because they only heard of the monster race beside the human race, but they haven't heard of the ancient god race. The little girl also asked about our protagonist why did he keep opening and closing the book, and then our protagonist was just doing that because the book was releasing some kind of power, and he was doing to massage his hand from that power. Man he even overpowered the overpower. In the next, we see Lu Ocean yelling at his son for his behavior in the courtroom. Later he tells him to release the news that our protagonist has received the Golden Book of Inheritance as soon as possible. He also regrets his last decision of kidnapping our protagonist and controlling the Empress so there will be no troubles for him today. He 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 he. Last time we saw, Lu Ocean also regrets his last decision of not kidnapping our protagonist and controlling the Empress. Meanwhile, our protagonist entered the palace and was surprised to see his wife working late with a lot of tasks. After chatting for a bit, he told her that the six million spirit stones from Lui Ocean had been sent to the palace. The empress asked for his help and gave him half of a jade pendant that could be merged into the palace storage key, which contained her father's wealth. She also asked our protagonist to take Lu Yan's lead people to move all the things from the old library to the new library that she built after ascending the throne. She also tells him that the things he brought over are also in the warehouse and Diane still has a lot of money to spend so it's his wish to take them or not. He combined both parts of the jade pendant and headed for the storage room but the Empress stops him and thanks him for helping her in the court. Our protagonist replies with a welcome. Later, 
Our protagonist arrives at the warehouse with the little girl and Lu Yen to look for something but according to the little girl, it just looks like a coffin. Hearing the ad our protagonist hits her on the head and he explained that it was an arsenal of weapons for individual soldiers and a special version of his masters. The little girl became interested but our protagonist refused to show her. And if possible our protagonist wants to never use these things again because now he just wants to be a lazy prince doing nothing. Next. Our protagonist decided to go to Lu Ocean's private old warehouse to take a look. However, he was stopped by guards outside. Our protagonist showed them the key to the palace's storage and explained that he was there to take over the treasury by order of the empress. Inside, they realized that the treasury was not an ordinary one, but a very large one filled with gold and precious stones. Our protagonist asked Lu Yen to bring the empress because it was up to her to decide how to handle it. While waiting, our protagonist talked to the little girl and joked that her father would faint if he saw this treasure. She defended her father, saying he had been in charge of the household department for so long and wouldn't pass out over a little treasure. Later, the emperor and Mr. Zhong arrived and were shocked by the size of the treasure. Mr. Zhong actually fainted. The empress was very happy with our protagonist because he had helped her discover her father's private warehouse. She gave him permission to take as many spirit stones as he wanted. Our protagonist was very happy and decided to take a big spirit stone for his bed in the next scene. We see our protagonist sleeping on that spirit stone, and he entered the sea of consciousness, and the spirit of inheritance of the ancient god was surprised to see the sea of consciousness of a human. He couldn't believe what he was seeing, so he double-checked. He believed that the lowly human race was not qualified to receive the inheritance of the ancient gods. He thought to himself that our protagonist must have used a shameless method to steal the inheritance of the ancient gods. Suddenly, a tomato emerged in front of him, and he was shocked because according to him, he had a starlight of 99, but the tomato that appeared was very powerful and had a starlight of 3000. He wondered who and how the tomato had arrived there since he felt the human race's sea of consciousness, not a tomato's. Upon further investigation, we found out that the tomato is not tomato but the tomato is Wangai, who is the servant of our protagonist and after some analysis, he found this the spirit of inheritance of the ancient god is responsible for teaching his spiritual body of inheritance knowledge. Suddenly, our protagonist arrived, and as soon as he appeared, the spirit of inheritance of the ancient god was shocked and kneeled in front of him. Our protagonist was confused to see an old man suddenly appear in his sea of consciousness, so he asked Wang Kai about it. Wang Kai informed him that this old man was a spirit of inheritance in the Golden Book and that, according to his analysis, he was the one who would teach the inheritor's knowledge in the sea of knowledge. The old man introduced him and tells him that he is the one who is going to teach our protagonist. Unbeknownst to our protagonist, the old man had actually planned to manipulate and play with him by pretending to impart knowledge. However, our protagonist quickly realized the old man's true intentions by simply looking into his eyes. To our protagonist, it seemed that people who were not of his race must have a different heart. From his perspective, the old man looked very bad, and our protagonist decided to take action by asking Wakai to eat the old man. The Wankai approached the old man and began to eat him, making the old man very angry, and he started abusing our protagonist. Later, Wankai completely ate him and upgraded his system. As our protagonist was dealing with the old man, an assassin was climbing his palace. Upon seeing our protagonist sleeping peacefully, the assassin decided to attack. He used his order to attack, but as soon as his dagger touched our protagonist, it shattered into pieces. The assassin was surprised to see that our protagonist was a man of steel. Suddenly, suddenly, our protagonist woke up from his sea of consciousness and asked the assassin how he got in and what he was doing. The assassin started making excuses, but our protagonist didn't buy them. Hearing the commotion, the guards who were protecting our protagonist's room from outside were about to barge in but our protagonist stopped them and told them that he had accidentally knocked something over. He asked them to call Lu Yen to come over. Our protagonist picked up the pieces of the assassin's dagger and started crushing them with his two fingers. 
The assassin was terrified after witnessing our protagonist crush a Sixth Order spiritual weapon blade with his bare fingers, and he fell to the ground. Soon after, Lu Yen arrived as she wasn't far away. Our protagonist told her about the situation. She was searching for the murder weapon, then our protagonist tells her that his weapon is shattered when he is smashed at him. Our protagonist also gives her the pieces of the assassin's dagger telling her that she can sell it to recycling waste for some money, and after looking at carefully she quickly realizes that it was a rare material, and she can get hundreds of thousands of spirit stones from selling it. Later Lu Yen confirms the assassin's identity that if he is from the Black Soul Hall but the assassin started making excuses and tells them that he just came here to the palace because he wanted to inquire about the information and capture a servant, but he suddenly ended up in the wrong person's room. Lu Yen tells him to accept his feet and his Black Soul Hall is also unlucky because it again fell into the hands of the prince. After hearing the word again he quickly realizes the old man with his discipline also came to the Yen dynasty but got killed by some powerful mysterious man. The assassin quickly realizes that our protagonist is that mysterious man who killed the old man and destroyed the famous blood cloud building in the southern wasteland within a day. The assassin then started screaming and asking our protagonist if he was that mysterious man named Hades. Our protagonist panicked and opened a portal to space with his bare hands throwing the assassin in and closing it shut. Later, he asked Lu Yen to check if the Empress is it still in the Imperial study room and if the voice here has alarmed her. But suddenly a gardener I San tells our protagonist that half hour ago after the general hurried into the palace the Empress load her and left, and it is possible that she will not come back at night so our protagonist should not wait for her. Movements later our protagonist went to sleep while looking forward to Mr. Jones delicious is good tomorrow. And the night ends, the next day, we see the little girl worrying about something and her mother arrives asking her if she heard any news of her father in the town. But the little girl had searched all over the city but couldn't find him anywhere. Let me tell you what happened, last night, the general and Mr. Zhong had a quarrel and she kicked him out of the room in anger and now they couldn't find Mr. Zhong anywhere. While both mother and daughter were talking our empress arrives and asks about the situation but the general tells her that didn't found in anywhere. However according to the empress, she believes that Mr. Zhong has been kidnapped and the biggest reason is to do with the things in southern Xinjiang. You guys are wondering how? Let me tell you the first time when our protagonist met Mr. Zhong he gave him some pieces of advice and from that advice, Mr. Zhong was able to make southern Xinjiang more and more stable. So many restless people looking among the refugees were secretly found out, and in order to relate they will definitely find an organization that can sneak into the imperial city and capture Mr. Dong Dian without knowing it. The Empress tells the General that there is only one organization like that and it is the Black Soul Hall. The General became more and more afraid because the behavior style of the Black Soul Hall is extremely perverse and violent. The general starts begging the empress to save her husband because she never asked the empress for anything she only wants her to save him. And our empress promises her that she will definitely save Mr. Jong, she asks the little girl to take care of her mother and leaves. And as soon as the empress left the general also decided to look around for Mr. Zaig she asked the little girl to stay at home and not to jump around. And after the general left, the little girl was worried about her father so she also decided to talk to our protagonist. Some time later, she reached the palace and barged into our protagonist's room destroying his peaceful sleep, and tells him that her father was taken away last and hadn't been found yet. Our protagonist was also got shocked that his cook has taken away, and the little girl was disappointed because her father regards our protagonist as a brother but our protagonist regards her father as a cook. Our protagonist accidentally said the wrong script so he decided to retake he again went to sleep to retake and our protagonist was also shocked that his brother Joan was taken away. Later our protagonist asked who had this many balls to kidnap his dear brother Mr. Joan, and it's the same organization as the guy who sneaked last night into the palace and wanted to kill our protagonist. After some critical deep and overthinking our protagonist came to the conclusion that the Black Soul Hall is targeting him, and they kidnapped Mr. Joan because he is the closest one half our protagonist, but don't know why because he's spending every day doing nothing just eating something delicious and drinking a little wine, he didn't even did something to provoke anyone. 
After some more time of critical deep and overthinking our protagonist came to the conclusion that if he didn't take any action something serious will happen to his brother Joan, and he'll never be able to eat his good food again. After some more time of critical deep and overthinking our protagonist decided to kill the whole Black Soul Hall organization. He assures the little girl that he will bring her father, and she doesn't have to worry, and leaves making a hole in the roof of the palace. After our protagonist left we see that the little girl started feeling a little sympathy for the Black Soul Hall, but Lu Yun believes that nothing to sympathize with and the Black Soul Hall was originally intended to be a disaster a disgusting and dirty force so it would be best if it was wiped out. On the other side, the Empress was on her way to the Black Soul Hall but she felt that someone is coming right from behind her, and it was our protagonist who was on his way to the Black Soul Hall. She couldn't see our protagonist but was shocked to see such a powerful and strong man. She noticed that he was also going to the Black Soul Hall's direction and thought that he must be the mysterious strongman named Heads, and decided to catch up with him to take a look. And in the Black Soul Hall, a man takes Mr. Jong in front of you Black Soul Hall's lord whose name is Bai Qinglian. He asked the man who kidnapped Mr. Jong if he faced any problems along the way and the man informs him that Mr. Zhong's wife General Zhong reacted very quickly and took the Empress of Yen Dynasty out of the city to search. Mr. Zhong came back to his sense and realizes that he is in the Black Soul Hall Palace, but he is not like the other people he is a more courageous man than other ordinary people. Bai Qinglian came right into the topic and it tells Mr. Zhong that he is invited here this time just to decide a matter and he wanted Mr. Zhong to protect our protagonist's position as prince and other than that he wants to cooperate with our protagonist to monitor all the movements of the Empress Zeroin. Last time, oh, holy cow. My voice, let me fix it. He 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 he. Yeah, this is fine. So last time we saw that the Black Soul Hall's lord whose name is Bai Qinglian wanted to cooperate with our protagonist to monitor all the movements of Empress Zero In. That's the reason he kidnapped Mr. Zhong. Mr. Zhong was curious that what they exactly going to do after monitoring the Empress. According to him our protagonist is just an ordinary man yet he values him so much and insists on protecting him. Bai Qinglian just wanted to deal with Lu Ocean, but he can't tell Mr. Zhong why he wants to. Bai Qinglian wanted to deal with Luliocean which means the external force colluding with Luliocean is not Black Soul Palace. Bai Qinglian asks Mr. Zhong to think about it again. But in the past, Mr. Zhong was just a poorly scholar, he won the favor of the late emperor, so he became what he is today, and the empress is also like his niece whom he grew up with, that's why he'll never betray him his family. Hearing this, Bai Qinglian ordered his man named Su Fu to show his abilities to Mr. Zhong. Suddenly a man shows up and hits Mr. Zhong. He forcefully made Mr. Zhong eat a poisonous bug. It's a parasite that will eat Mr. Zhong every internal organ within three days if he doesn't smell the fragrance. Its feet will also pierce his lungs, skin, and flesh to suck blood. It will make Mr. Zhong living life a hell. But after eating the poisonous bug Mr. Zhong didn't even scream which left all of the people confused and made Su Fu really angry. Mr. Zhang didn't scream because the first emperor did not hesitate to lower his status for him and called him his brother. He is also a teacher and a friend. And Empress Zeroyan also called him her uncle since she was a child. So he would rather die standing up than live on his knees and instead of screaming he started laughing out loud. Bai Qinglian realized that it was no use and they can't blackmail him so he asked his man to kill Mr. Zhong. The man was about to kill Mr. Zhong so, he started to apologize in his mind to the Empress, his daughter, and his wife because he can't help the Empress anymore, can't watch his daughter marry and have children, and he shouldn't have quarreled to his wife last night. He already gave up on his life, but our protagonist arrives making a hole on the roof and leaving everyone shocked. Our protagonist jumps on top of the man who was about to kill Mr. Zhong and tells Mr. Zhong that he doesn't have to cry anymore because our protagonist is here to save him. Our protagonist is angry at everyone and will not forgive anyone who tried to hurt his cook. He decided to attack and kill them, ignoring the fact that Mr. Zhong is seeing him fighting. But Bai Qinglian stops our protagonist and tells him that Mr. Zhong has a bug in his stomach and it hurts so much that he will die from the pain. 
but our protagonist pointed at Mr. Song and tells everyone that he is totally fine he isn't even screaming and they are lying to our protagonist saying that Mr. Jong will die because of pain. So, everyone recommended our protagonist ask Mr. Jong himself and our protagonist asks Mr. Jong if he really is dying. But Mr. Zhang forgot everything because of pain. Instead of answering he asks our protagonist if he really is the prince. So our protagonist tells my story that a little girl named Zhong Ling mentioned that when she was six years old she had a nasty father who purposely put his butt on her face before farting. Everyone busted into a laugh, and Mr. Zhong was freaked out because the little girl remembered the accident when she was six years old, and why our protagonist used this kind of thing to prove. Wait, 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 what the heck was he doing putting his butt onto his daughter? Well my mind is already turned into trash watching all these hentai. What the hell he was doing? Our protagonist asks them to bring the antidote. Su Fu brings the fragrance. And after smelling it, Mr. Zhong tells our protagonist that it is not an antidote it is just a fragrance to relieve the poisonous worm in his stomach from devouring his lungs. The Bai Qinglian and others asked if they can exchange their life for an antidote. And they can also conclude a blood contract. But Mr. Zhong refused to make a blood contract because it is the rule of heaven and earth. Once it is said it can't be violated. Once it is achieved our protagonist will never be able to take action against them. Mr. Zhong suggested our protagonist not to make any blood contracts because he is not scared of death. Bai Qinglian and others are now scared because the worst case happened they are not afraid of our protagonists, they are afraid of Mr. Zhong because he is not afraid of that death. And other side our protagonist decided to make the blood contract because if Mr. Zhong died who will cook such delicious food for our protagonist? And what's more if Mr. Zhong died the little girl will also cry to death. Our protagonist makes the blood contract and gets the antidote that will turn the poisonous worm into pus in three days after taking it. After taking the antidote our protagonist warns everyone and leaves with Mr. Zhong. As soon as our protagonist left, Bai Qinglian and his people again started making plans to take revenge on our protagonist. While they were discussing a green-haired girl noticed something and was shocked, she pushed Bai Qinglian and pointed at the gate. Bai Qinglian also got freaked out after noticing that thing. And it was our protagonist and Mr. Zhong who were peeping from the gate and listening to all their discussion of taking revenge on our protagonist. Our protagonist actually didn't leave he wanted to make sure they do something nasty again. War protagonist comes out and starts thinking of the words to describe this kind of person. After long thinking, our protagonist tells him that a dog can't stop himself from eating shit. Our protagonist wanted to give them a chance to get them on the right path. He also wanted to pay him the composition of breaking his roof but he is now very disappointed. Bai Qinglian started making excuses and tells him that it was just a misunderstanding and they even made a contract now. But our protagonist misunderstood and tells him that he estimated Bai Qinglian at first he thought that Bai Qinglian just wants to destroy his relationship with the Empress through Xiang Yuan Bai, the old man with his discipline. Our protagonist didn't expect him to have a search vicious mind. At first, Bai Qinglian tells our protagonist how can he use Xiang Yuan Bai because he is already killed by Hades. But after starting his shitty ass mind he realized and asked our protagonist if he is Hades. Our protagonist asked him not to talk nonsense because he doesn't kill innocent people because Xiang Yuan Bai committed suicide. They all got scared and our protagonist was about to attack. But Su Fu attacked by throwing up on our protagonist. And our protagonist obviously dodged and killed him by making a hole in the wall. Our protagonist provoked and violated the rules of heaven and earth. Bai Qinglian started making fun of our protagonist because he violated the rules of heaven and earth so he would get killed. The sky became dark and started thundering. Later, a dragon emerges from the sky to kill our protagonist. However, our protagonist even challenged the dragon that if you have guts, try to kill him. And guess what the dragon also got scared of our protagonist. And now he is on our protagonist's side. Later the dragon ran away and our protagonist broke the blood contract. By Qinglian again we started making some excuses. So our protagonist decided to give them a chance because he is always too soft-hearted. He tells them that he'll count to three and they have to tell him a good thing that they have done in their life. 
Later, our protagonist only counted three and killed them. Mr. Zhong is shocked to see our protagonist's power, but he warns him not to expose his strengths to anyone. He also tells him that Lu Yen and his daughter already know about his power and also promise to offer protagonists to keep it a secret from everyone. Sometime later outside, our protagonist takes Mr. Zhong to the storeroom of Black Soul Hall which was locked by chains. Our protagonist breaks the chain, and inside was a lot of gold worth 32 million stones. Mr. Zhong wanted to hand it over to the National Treasury because the tax revenue for Yen Dynasty for a whole year is only 10 million spirit stones so it's worth a lot. But our protagonist wanted it as composition he calculates all the fees like service phase, tuition fees, transportation fees, mental damage fees came up with 37 million spirit stones so the Black Soul Hall still owes our protagonist 5 million more spirit stones. In the next scene, we see our protagonist and Mr. Zhong in the air. Our protagonist details Mr. Zhong to be it as he cleared the corpses. After clearing the corpse Mr. Zhong asked our protagonist how strong he is and what realm he is in. However, our protagonist doesn't have any realm, and he doesn't even have an aura. His strength is a bit special, but he doesn't know how strong he is but fortunately, he is very good at controlling power otherwise Yan Dynasty would have destroyed country. After hearing that Mr. Zhang also requested our protagonist to teach him. But he got rejected. After that, they have a long chat but suddenly our protagonist felt like the empress who was trying to catch up with the Hades means our protagonist is arriving so, so our protagonist quickly left after riding this on the valley. The empress arrives and Mr. Zhang reports to her that he was captured by a man under the command of the Black Soul Hall and according to the Black Soul Hall's lord named is Bai Qinglian said, and he wanted Mr. Zhong to protect the prince from being harmed by Lu Ocean. He tells her that suddenly Hades appeared wearing a black cloth, he killed everyone in the black soul hall, and gave Mr. Zhong the antidote he also asked Mr. Zhong to take all the treasures because he didn't like them at all. This left the empress confused and couldn't understand what Hades is trying to do, and according to Mr. Zhong, it seemed that he just wanted to see the Yen Dynasty stable and didn't want the Yen Dynasty to be affected by Black Soul Hall and Black Cloud Building. Mr. Zhong also gives the Empress a ring which the Hades gave her as a gift. My god this man lies so smoothly. He is like that person who calls 911 and instead of telling his emergency, he asks for their emergency. They decided to quickly rush back because his wife and daughter are both worried about him. On the other side, the general and the little girl was waiting for Mr. Zhong and as he arrives the general hugs him. While the little girl teases them because the old couple is overreacting. The scene switches, and we see the empress who is working alone and feeling lonely like you guys feel alone at midnight sometime later. The empress finished all the work and doesn't have much appetite now she heads back for the rest but outside our protagonist was waiting for her he cooked a hot pot supper for her. The Empress was shocked to see him and asked why was he here sober protagonist tells her that he received the information from Lu Yen that the Empress has a little habit, and that is every time she stays up late to deal with the government affairs she always have to eat something late at night alone so our protagonist decided to wait for her to eat, and in this way, she won't feel lonely. Later, some bullshit moments happens like. He feeds her, she gets embarrassed, she fell in love, like every other typical romantic anime. Later they finish their dinner or food or whatever. Our protagonist collects everything on his ring and was about to leave but the empress stops him. And the scene changes. In the next scene, we see both of them on the bed. Nope, they aren't doing that. The empress was just training in front of him. Our protagonist got bored but suddenly our protagonist noticed some light effects surrounding the empress and was amazed because he can't do it. He asked the Wankai if he can give our protagonist this kind of light effect however. Wonkai tells him that this is not a light effect this is the Empress's aura and this kind of purple aura is very noble and extremely rare and belongs to the orthodoxy of the human race. There are 3000 volts of different sizes in this world and human reaches are all over the world. The inheritance of Taoism is different and the Emperor's bloodline belongs to the most orthodoxy lineage in the world of 3000 realms. Our protagonist asked Wonkai to forget it and upgraded the system. And our protagonist again started at his wife and drooling over her. 
and as she opened her eyes our protagonist moved and tells her that he just took a look and didn't do anything. The Empress was very happy, she turned off the lights or candles, and I asked our protagonist to have a rest and go to sleep. Sometime later at night the Empress kisses our protagonist it was a reward because earlier he asked her a reward for feeding her. Nope you guys don't know because I escaped that part where they were having a nice dinner or supper. Another side, our protagonist totally embarrassed because it's just his first kiss is gone. And now he can't sleep. This is for today, and the video is late because I just received my first payment of YouTube, so I was just searching on YouTube like this. How can I become the richest person in the world under two days with $120 in the pocket? Have a nice day.